career path. When you talk about your career, you think about your career, the question is, what's up next? And the question, what's up next, normally can't be answered by many because often think, well, I just try to stay afloat and somehow try to blend in. And that, of course, is not what you are looking for. The main issue will be how can you design a career path? And when you are now listening to this and you're working in an organization, you often think, how can we keep people working for us? Because we have an interest that they work for us the longest amount of time possible. However, we have numerous issues to address, especially in the English-speaking world. And most of you will be coming from the English-speaking world right now, especially when it comes to career. There are quite a number of behaviors which we see frequently in organizations that are, let's say, less than ideal. Often people are very hesitant to give you a career. They say you are not there yet. However, when you ask where am I? And when will I be where I should be? You do not really get an answer. Or someone says, I don't see you there, which is even more mysterious and not specific at all. And that that is often aligned with a terrible pay. Now, when you listen to from the US, I do not mean you. However, especially when you look at payment levels in the UK, they are way below where they should be. And Every time someone claims that it's now time for a raise, people come up with, we trained you. Well, well of, of course you did. They work for you. And the only reason why you trained them is because they work for you. So you cannot use that forever to not pay your people properly. The result of this fluctuation employee turnover, dissatisfied employees, just look at look on glass.com and you see where you are. Also, when you have a high employee turnover, low motivation, you have a low productivity. And the low productivity immediately affects the bottom line. I do not think that any one of you has an interest in doing so. So how can we do better? Step number one is you need development plans. And I do not mean these motivational one-liner development plans, like be a part of something bigger, be a part of something great, making people thrive, the usual trombone, but that no one believes in any way. Normally accompanied by marketing one-liners of mission, vision, and value statements that can be as vague as possible so no one really knows what to do, but you all have to align to it. Real development plans must be structured and they have to be documented. Documented means in writing. And uh, what I do not mean is, and I just had that a couple of weeks ago, is someone opened Microsoft OneNote and had like 10 bullet points in there, which in their team is the, is the development plan. That's not a development plan. You must have you must have proper job descriptions. Where are people? Where can they develop? And also, you need real responsibility and accountability when it comes to not only training your people but dealing with your people on a daily basis. And by the way, you might have heard the phrase "My door is always open for you." Well, we know how well that worked. This often means my door is always open for you when I don't have anything else to do. However, that never happens, so my door is not really open. So when you come in, I normally tell you I don't have time for you right now. You cannot develop people on the side. It's a proper job that has to be done properly. However, you now have to decide what you focus on. Do you want to uh, de develop your own people so they work for you longer? Or do you want to have external people who bring in fresh ideas, probably more innovation? Or do you have a mixture of that? No matter how you choose, an employer branding effect immediately happens. However, you have to make a choice. You cannot tell everyone internally saying you have all the chances to, to develop from intern to CEO and then tell everyone from external sources coming into your organization you have all the chances as well. That is simply not very realistic because people look into your hierarchical pyramid and they will find out that, well, at least one of you probably hasn't told, told the full truth. So looking at your employer branding means you have to make the decision, what is your preference? Develop internal people to become your own new leaders or hire externally. By the way, it also comes with a price tag. People who come externally into your organization often demand more money. And as soon as they demand more money, you have to think of what do I do with the other people who work for me? Because they probably now get paid less than someone else who is here for a shorter amount of time. Of course, you can say we have a mixture of both, but that is the most challenging way. You have to tell people where are they in short term, mid term and long term. Are you the company that is looking more for a temporary employment or are you the company that looks for long term employment? Be open about that. When you look at large organizations like Google, they say the average employee at Google stays two, three, some four or five years, but not many. So they are very open that many people come take that chance, work there for a bit, and then leave. And Google is fine with that. This is why they have the process in place that they have right now. 
What you really need to reconsider, and I especially need to address the the UK here, is how you deal with loyalty. You want loyal employees. You want that people focus on the brand, connect to the organization, be a brand ambassador, bring other people in, et cetera, et cetera. You call it sustainability. Immediately, when someone says, can I have a salary raise? And your answer is no. The following might happen. And these discussions happen every week, especially in the English-speaking world. Someone says, may I have a raise? You say no. You might give a reason, which at least will be good if you do, if you give them a reason. A week later, they say, well, I'm going to leave the organization. I have a different offer on the table and they pay more. And I want to take that offer. And then you say, I match that with a counter offer. Do you, do you actually hear yourself talking here? One week before, you said, we have no money to give you a raise. Then they come up with a different offer and suddenly you can match the offer. Then there must be some magic money tree in your backyard or you're just lying with keeping a straight face. When you're lying through your teeth to your employees, you shouldn't be surprised that they have very little interest to be engaged with your organization. And also... When you have a problem that people make more money than you or you will still refer to, I didn't make that when I was at your age, which is, by the way, not relevant at all what you made at their age, any manager or any executive that has envy as their motivation needs to leave the organization. It's not only about hierarchy. It is about who contributes to the organization's goals. That is what counts when it comes to how to pay people. And of course, I published more on that. If you go on expert.nb-networks.com, just put your email address in there. Once per week, every Wednesday morning, you receive all the resources I publish, of course, free of charge only via that channel. Um, of course, some people might now think, can I have a chat about that? Because I see this problem in my organization. And especially when you are from the UK, you most likely have encountered what I just told you about. Happy to have a chat with you. Just drop me an email, nb at nb-networks.com. And then we can have a chat. Of course, when you now say, hey, we have something very specific, we need someone for training, speaking, coaching, consulting, or in the long run, mentoring, project interim management, or you have an event and you need a speaker or an event host, an MC, let me know. We can talk about that as well. But we can also just have a chat. NB at NB, NB at NB networks.com, NB at NB networks.com. And then we can have a chat right there. The most important aspect right now is that you apply what you heard in this podcast, because if you don't apply what you have heard, it means that your organization will not change. It's always nice when you get education, but applying the education and applying what you heard is important to your organization, especially right now, is in a very competitive position because many people at the moment are looking for new jobs because their organization failed to address the cost of living. And by the way, when you now say, well, it affects us all, that is not a reason why people want to stay in your organization. Just to give you an example, Microsoft just doubled their budget for salaries and raised the employee salaries by 25% right now. So you need to act on this. And what I see right now in organization and what's happening in organization is not the most sustainable approach towards employment. Wishing you all the best to apply what you heard in this podcast in your organization. Feel free to contact me anytime. And now there's only one thing for me left to say. Thank you very much for your time.